all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another marvel future fight video and today i logged in and in the middle of running my quest for athena i actually noticed that i got some free energy here and there was actually a survey hidden over here for me to do now i do want to say that i'm happy that they actually implemented the survey as quickly as they did however i don't think this is the best place to put it because it can be easily missed right i think they should have put it like on the front page make it a pop-up so as soon as you come in make it be something you have to choose to ignore right because if you put it over here there's a lot of people who log into the game get the daily login stuff come to their gift box and just click collect all and then they leave now they could see this pink dot or red dot or whatever and then decide to come over here and collect it and that's okay right but i would have preferred if just like when they're advertising stuff for cash they would put this on the front page now i'm not too sure what the entirety of this survey is so we're going to go through it together i'm going to show you guys my answers and you can let me know what your answers are in the comment section so it says right here hello agents the marvel future fight survey is in progress to help provide a better play experience complete the survey and get rewards the following information is collected during the survey okay so basically just your game info so basically your answers are locked to just your account it's good it's good so let's see first question which of the following is the hardest to upgrade for me now here's the thing nothing is really that hard for me because of the fact that i spend money on the game but i do have i do have a free to play account so i'm gonna answer for my free to play account and the hardest thing I've noticed for my free to play account is keeping up with the amount of characters that I need to awaken slash transcend, right? So that's the answer I'm gonna choose here. I feel like level one to 60 is easy enough. Ranking up is now easier than ever because it costs half the bios that it used to cost. Mastery, very easy. Gear five to 15, very easy. 15 to 20, also very easy. Tier two advancement, they give you enough tickets. Realizing your potential, that's easy enough. You just play World Boss a couple days. And if you're a whale, just use a ticket to do that. Enhancing your potential. The RNG is there, but you can choose to avoid it, right? 60 to 70, you can choose to avoid the RNG by paying 100%, right? Gear 20 to 25 is hard, but you have story missions that you can get um, tier three match from now. So it's easier than it was previously. Tier three, yes, it's hard, but from my experience on my free to play account, I feel as though awakening and transcending my characters are the hardest part. So I'm gonna go with the initial awakening because after you awaken them, it's cheaper to finish up, right? So I'm gonna go with um, awakening characters because even on my main account, I don't have all the characters awakened. So if I were to be answering truthfully, this would be the one that I answer for both of my accounts. Okay, let's see. How much time do you play Marvel Future Fight each day? um probably around <laughs> this to be honest with you because between let me let me try and calculate it story mode is about an hour minimum now we have an hour and a half of the mention missions then i have about 20 to 30 minutes of timeline battle then there's abx and if i'm trying to keep up with the boys and i have to rerun multiple times it might take me 30 to 45 minutes right then there's shadowland then there's gbr um and i have keep in mind i also have the second account but the second account is only like a uh, 45 minutes max per day i'm gonna say 7 to 11 7 to 11 hours because you have to keep in mind that after i finish all of my dailies i hop back in to work on videos and stuff so i have to test things out so for me 7 to 11 that's about accurate okay i don't think anybody should be playing the game for seven hours personally unless they're making content on the game okay <laughs> but anyways how many games do i play aside from marvel future fight um five or more yeah i, I play i still play a little bit of grand cross here or there i play a bunch of games on my consoles and whatnot so yeah i play a lot of games <laughs> all right so what is the most important factor when purchasing a uniform character recognition character likability character gender uniform performance uniform appearance update theme okay so i think every single one of you guys should choose this uniform performance 
because there's a bunch of uniforms in the game that look really good but offer no substance and whether you're a free to play or a pay to play player i think the one thing we all have in common is when we purchase something of course we want it to look good on the surface right but we also want it to be useful to us think about it like in life people who you work with people who you date obviously appearance is a big thing but after that there has to be substance there right so for me the uniform performance outweighs everything i'll buy an ugly uniform that can help me clear stuff in the game over a uniform that looks good but is absolutely useless so i'm gonna go with uniform performance and i think you guys should go with that as well which of the following are you excited for in a new update new content at this point we have over 240 something characters and if you count the uniforms and how they change the characters genders and their playstyle, it feels like there's over 300 right so for me new content and i would say a few new characters like omega red you know havoc polaris there's a couple characters that i'm really looking forward to getting in the game at some point right but yeah new content should be number one should i like exclude these two just so they understand that listen the most important thing to us right now is new content like new world i, I wish you could i'm gonna put new giant boss raids and oh i can't put anything else wow boss legend hopefully they understand what that means all right so Okay, which of the following do you prefer? Um, I want both, but I can't choose both. Okay, so I'll go with PvE because the majority of the game is PvE. And listen, to me. <laughs> PvP is pretty much pay to win in most mobile games, so I'll go with PvE. So, which of the following do I prefer? Group game modes like Giant... Right now, I'm on a wave where I enjoy the group game modes more than the uh, solo, just because... For the past like what six years i've just been playing all the solo content so now i'm just in this zone where i'm like i'm enjoying playing with the squad you know so i'm gonna go with group maybe that will inspire them to release some a few more giant boss raids because come on guys if you've been around do you guys remember the community engagement that we had when galactus first came out because nobody could beat them you remember how we spent the entire saturday trying to figure out the boss mechanics and helping our friends and family members in the giant boss raid and we did that for weeks and months until everybody got to a point where we could beat them on our own and we no longer needed people for that right that was one of the best times to play marvel future fight because everybody would always say hey are you running giant boss raid galactus on saturday i need the help it was it was so nice to see the community come together and that's part of the reason why i want a new difficult giant boss raid because that feeling was amazing right so hopefully they had a new one which of the following do you like the most okay so i'm gonna pick um world boss and then I'm gonna pick, I really like Giant Boss Raid, but it's kind of boring now because for me, it only lasts for like 15 to 30 seconds. So stories, can I say I like it just because the rewards are good? Cause like stories long, tedious and repetitive and kind of boring at some points, but the rewards are so good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put story. I also like Dispatch too because of the rewards, not necessarily because of the piece of content. I'm gonna put Giant Boss Raid. Yeah, I'm gonna put Giant Boss Raid. All right, oh, which of the following do you like the most? Okay, so, well, bro, this is from PVP. So DRX and then Alliance Conquest and Timeline Battle, I guess. Okay. Um. That's a tough one because I want new bosses, but new bosses for world boss and giant boss raid won't necessarily force you to play the game more. You'll just be playing those new bosses instead of the old bosses, right? So I don't necessarily want a new game mode per se. I just want new bosses for those existing game modes. So I'm not sure if I should be choosing it's, um, it's enough or is not enough right i wish you could like fill in your reason as to why you think it's not enough and why you think it is enough so i'm gonna say it's not enough 
Hopefully they watch this. Anyways, did you find any of the following too long? Well, story is a bit long. The epic quest kind of tedious. Timeline survival is hella annoying. I don't even play that thing. Um, to be honest, AC, I would like it to be shorter, but I would rather them fix, man, it's rough. Like, I don't want these long, here's the thing. The new epic quests, they're not really that long. It's just annoying with all the energy research missions, right? So, you know what? I'm going to choose Alliance Conquest in hopes that maybe they'll cut it down from like, um, what is it? Four days to two or three days. You know, that would, that would make it so that it's easier for people to fit it into their schedules and whatnot. Or maybe it'll make it harder. I don't know. It's rough. But I'm going to go with these three. Part of me really wants to go with um, Epic Quest though. Let me know what you guys chose in the comments. You found too short? Nah. I have to choose something? Something that's too short. Um, actually, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose, um, where's Giant Boss right? Yeah, cause for me right now, you're pretty much, I pretty much just one shot Galactus in like five seconds, maybe 15 seconds if I'm building up the beat down, right? And then Danger Room is a one shot as well. And World Boss, it's, it's long, but I'm saying it's short in terms of I need new bosses, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna say it's short for that reason alone. Okay, if you've played all the game modes, where do you use your energy most? Okay, so I, I use most of my energy Right now, because of the Epic Quest, it's going into Dimension Missions, but if that's not the case, about 300 goes into um, Story every day. And then after that, it's uh, Giant Boss Raid, Danger Room. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I do the, the mandatory um, Dimension Missions, but I don't go in there and do extra stuff, right? All right. Do you have any suggestions? Oh, they have, okay. All right, so let me type this up, boys. All right, guys, so this is pretty annoying. I ran into a dilemma where I have a lot that I wanna say, but I cannot say it because of the fact that you only get 500 characters. So I've been trying to cram everything that I possibly can into this. And this is what I've come up with so far, but even this is too much for me to fit in here. So basically I said, add a new world boss legend every four months and a new GBR every six months with a new difficulty and greater rewards in order to keep the game fresh and exciting. Because fighting the same bosses over and over for eight months to a year is one of the leading causes for player burnout. It's the main reason why a lot of people leave this game after a while because they're like, I'm just doing the same thing over and over and it's just really boring, right? The next thing I said here is they need to increase the amount of earnable crystals in the game via daily and weekly events. I prefer battle events. I don't like the whole login and get stuff. I like to log in and earn stuff right and i also said they could do that through timeline battle because it would motivate more players to build more pvp characters teams and play more because i noticed a lot of you guys who've been playing the game for years are still in bronze and silver and not even trying to get the vibranium because the rewards crystal wise is just not worth the effort so you don't even bother building pvp characters and honestly that's a major l for netmarble because they could be making a lot more money off people building pvp characters if they were actually willing to give out better pvp rewards i also said they need to increase right here the success rate when reforging ctps because it's very disheartening for you to spend a bunch of money getting CDPs and then after you reforge it, trying to get a brilliant, you spend 100, 200, and all you have to show for it is maybe one or two brilliant CDPs after you've spent like $20,000. It's pretty disheartening. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people who spend a lot of money on the game to help the game stay afloat leave after a while because if I'm gonna give you my money and you're gonna give me nothing in return, that one-way exchange only happens for so long, right? So let me know what you guys think. I'm trying to like, 
like cram all of this in as few words as possible and i just cannot get it done so i'm gonna wrap the video up right here and i'm gonna try my best to cram everything in okay so let me know what you guys decided to put as a suggestion on how they could improve the game or game modes i'll catch you guys in the next one be safe peace out